When we get to meet with schools and it's an early years project, usually we like to meet with a variety of different people that are part of that project. So the early years team, head teacher, school business manager, and an important part is to be able to go and actually see the space and how it's currently being used. So see how the children use it now and then work with the um, team that are part of the project to understand what it is that they're trying to achieve and what is their vision. So whether that's trying to uh, zone their outdoor space so it covers all different areas of learning within the earliest curriculum or whether it's certain elements of the curriculum that they're trying to achieve. So depending on the school's budget, depending on the size of the space, we can then try and tailor a design in an outdoor space that is part of that early years curriculum that usually the school are trying to achieve. I think uh, Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 areas tend to be like a lot bigger and vast with the spaces they're given. You have to kind of make sure that you cater for all the children's needs, the seven areas of learning, so you just have to be quite tactical with what products you put in there and why you've put them in there as well. Uh, luckily with our products we tick the seven areas of learning with pretty much every product that we do anyway, so no matter how big or small the area is, you can ensure that we tick all those boxes for the children. All of our products really encourage learning through play because we have a great product team that are always trying to make sure that everything that we design is as multi-purpose as possible. We do a lot of reviewing and feedback so we'll go in and see how that product is used with children before it goes live. We get lots of feedback from teachers and schools to say what works, what doesn't and often so many of our products they're just so multi-purpose that they encourage many different ways of learning. So for example the water wall uh, for children in their heads it's probably just thinking that they're playing with water and they're having a great time but with our water walls they're big so it means that you can have a few children around the space so it encourages that personal social emotional development it encourages communication language and team building because often you find that you can have some children working on their own or they can be working in a team where there's different ways of being able to transport the water that encourages things like understanding the world or mathematics because children are having to think about can I get water from this place to this place so how can we transport it can we make it go slower or faster and uh, where the water wall has elements of the pipes and different um, materials being able to be used children are having to use fine motor to be able to do so so a product that is just seen as a water wall has so many different elements and benefits that it ends up encompassing all that different um, characteristics of effective learning within the curriculum for early years. So we always design our products with curriculum in mind. Historically we've focused in on the seven areas of learning um, but we also design around the characteristics of effective learning which is nearly more important at that age and so it's important that our designs facilitate both these areas of curriculum. Um, the characteristics of effective learning, um, the three of those are creating and thinking critically. So children will develop their own ideas, they link, make links between ideas, and they develop their own strategies for doing things. Um, the second one is active learning. So whenever children encounter difficulties, they walk through them themselves or in groups and they enjoy their achievements. Um, and the last one is playing and exploring. So that one's just having a go and not being afraid to have a go. And they investigate things and experience new things. These three areas allow the children to learn independently and problem solve when things go wrong, and which really sets them up to become better learners later in life and become successful adults. And um, which is really what Pentagon's all about, you know, improving children's lives today to shape healthier, happier adults the future. I think one of the most important things to consider when designing an early year scheme is always knowing that each early year space you go to is very different and I think the most important thing is really understanding what that school is trying to achieve so every school is so different you might find that in some schools they're really wanting to try and tackle physical development, core stability, um, fine motor skills and then in some it's trying to um, get role play, really encourage communication and language, maybe personal social emotional development. So I think the most important thing is it's probably not one thing, it's understanding that each school is very different and really trying to listen to what they want so that you can design a space that includes that. 
but often what we would normally say is trying to have all areas of the curriculum within their outdoor space so that zoning so having water play the messy play the role play zones and having something that caters for all children because some children naturally will be more confident in areas than others so by having an area that includes everything within the curriculum to all different seven areas of learning it allows children to play with what they're used to but also maybe start to explore those different areas that they're not as confident within so say for example um, some children are naturally more confident, they might love the role play zone, but you might find that there are some children that are less confident and that could be really daunting. By just including everything within your outdoor space, it allows children to get familiar with it, it allows children to start to uh, have a go at doing it and it just means that you can really achieve all different areas of learning within the space. So usually we would say try and zone and have as much as possible and make it as open-ended as possible so that you can uh, children don't basically get bored of it and they can find different ways of using it each time and use their imagination and creativity. So when designing, um, I would say that because early years areas can be quite vast yet so small as well, um, I try and make sure that the areas sort of tie into one another, whether that's with artificial surfaces such as artificial grass and a wet pool roadway that kind of, um, kind of goes around the area joining these zones together. I like to make sure that the areas are tied together so that it makes like a learning environment rather than just plonking products into corners of an area and then there's just one sort of area that and product that they can use at one time. Um, when it comes to installations, I think it's quite important for schools to know that we can install early years areas all year round. I think it's quite nice for the children to also see that it's a learning opportunity they can uh, see what, what has been invested in the school and how things are built and put together so it's good for the STEM and STEAM learning as well. So anything we design for nurseries really needs to be free-flowing, open-ended and child-led to let them learn in their own ways. Um, so children learn it in all different types of ways at that age and it's really important that our products um, that we design are open-ended enough to facilitate this. Um, we did a lot of research into schemas, so schemas vary from child to child and it's really important that the, our designs give them that freedom to have those independent learning opportunities. So another thing that popped up in my primary research was the focus on environment rating scales. There's a few different ones, movers, actors and editors. Um, so the mover skill was really important in my research because it shows the rating of the quality of the children's environment but it also shows the quality of the movement experiences that they're having and that you know just throughout the day and so that really was a main focus for my primary research on my project which is physical development in early year settings. So a way that we're able to include different areas of learning through our spaces is working with the school to really understand what it is that they're trying to achieve. So that might be physical development, that might be role play, that might be encouraging more sensory play. And often with an early year space, what we like to do is zone an outdoor area. So have different areas within that space that are clear zones that replicate the different areas of learning and children can then navigate their own choice of play. So a lot of what children are meant to be doing in reception is sort of independently making their own choices, being able to find things, more child initiated led play. So by zoning an outdoor area that's got clear zones that still can be interchanged, it means that if we've got a role play zone or an active zone or a messy play zone, children can navigate their choice of learning through that. So a really important part is understanding what is that early year space trying to achieve and then us being able to work collaboratively with the school to find different ways of achieving that. So by sitting through the brochure and having a look at what items we can do, um, whether that's going through photos and showing other projects that we've done, understanding if they've got any photos or Pinterest ideas that they would like to try and achieve and then we can create an environment that basically encompasses all of those things by usually zoning.